Now we have uh, Christina Di Sano of uh, Smart Hydropower. Welcome to Eco Summit. Okay. Hello. I'm happy I still have some audience left. <laughs> Thank you, Jan, for the invite again. Uh, some of you might remember us from last year. Um, our CEO and founder was there presenting. His name's Carl Kolmze. My name's Christina. I'm responsible for sales in the company and here today filling in for Carl. So if I don't know all the keywords of our investor round, you'll have to forgive me, but I will pass your contact on. Um, I've been with the company for three years and we were founded uh, in August 2010 when we developed this turbine. Um, this is a five kilowatt kinetic hydropower turbine, meaning we use the flow of the water, river, canal, we're adapting it to possibly use it in some tidal applications um, to produce energy. And one of our base, one of our USPs is the fact that we make baseload power. So we've talked a lot about s energy storage, battery usage. Um, when you have baseload power, you're not completely free of batteries depending on the usage you're trying to achieve, but you've definitely avoided using as many batteries as you would, for example, have to use with solar in a rural situation, in an electrification project. Um, our main, I would say, advantage is that we're very flexible in our size. We need a river or canal with about two meters depth and two meters width. We can produce pretty much anywhere as long as the water is moving at a rate of one meter per second or higher. Um, our design process was a design-to-cost approach, meaning we very much looked at the economics from the get-go. Um, our founder and CEO, he's not, I would say, not coming from a typical engineering background. He's more coming from the energy utility background, so the price per kilowatt was very important from day one. Um, this is what you'll see in the picture. Everything in blue is made of plastic, roto-molded plastic, uh, lowering the cost significantly, but also lowering the weight of the product. The product weighs in total 380 kilos, which means you can install it in the deepest jungle in the world with 10 men, or you can install it in half a day with a little crane truck. Um, lastly, or sorry, before that, the, the packaging deal. We sell our product as a package always, off-grid or on-grid, for a very low price, actually, 12,500 euro. So depending on the water flow, we're seeing a payback as little as three years or as long as 10 to 15 years. The 10 to 15 years is more like if you have a lake rather than a river. <laughs> um, the last advantage I would say, especially in the field of kinetic hydropower, is debris protection. This is an issue um, in every river or canal, especially during the fall season that we have right now. Um, we had a very unique strategy, I would say, going to the market. We didn't test forever. We built a prototype and went in approximately four international locations with very different natural surroundings. Some had a lot of debris, some had flash floods, some had very little debris. And so we learned very quickly how can we deal with this problem and how can we make it as usable as possible. And this is our final result. And the background here is the Inn River near Rosenheim in Germany. So a little bit to the market, which um, I would say is my specialty since I'm in sales. Uh, the main largest customer would be rural electrification. Um, some of these countries, uh, basically all of these countries, we have a first reference project installed and either complete partnerships, meaning a company which is helping us do our import, doing local sales, and doing final assembly installation and commissioning, or just simple sales partnerships. Um, many people ask, okay, but how do you finance projects in these countries? Well, more and more the government and uh, local private utilities in these countries are being required to electrify these regions. And instead of extending the local, the centralized grid, it makes a lot more sense in many situations to bring a turbine. It's either that, usually, or it's a diesel generator. But the cost of diesel in these very remote regions is costing approximately $2.00 per liter, so when we're opt working at an optimal range, we're usually about 15 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So we're usually beating the diesel generator very easily. Other markets, which we haven't included in this slide, are private customers, um, usually in Europe or North America, who just want to be independent of the grid, uh, timber industry, mining industry, 
uh, fish farms, agricultural applications, so countries with lots of canals, irrigation canals, Pakistan, India, all these places are usually um, dependent upon diesel generators for now. So our strategy, which I kind of hinted at already, is um, founded by local partnerships. We need a company who really knows the, the culture there, who knows the language, who, knows, who has contacts. This is the main strategy that we're following and has been since the beginning. Our first full partner is in Indonesia. He is basically doing um, uh, conversion from gas turbines to di diesel turbines to gas turbines. Um, and started a new sector with the renewable energy, so turbines, solar, solar and wind turbines. Um, the partner, since our product is rather cheap and we don't want to raise the price too high, otherwise no one will buy it anymore because then they'll just buy a diesel generator, is basically in added services. So if you think about it in the long term, we have one turbine here now, one turbine there, but in these water-rich regions, there's many villages and they're usually always located along a river because this is the main transport artery, not a road or something like uh, a train track. Um, once you have a network of turbines, you build up a servicing center, you build up a local workshop, you build up extra parts, um, you build up a maintenance strategy and even a payment strategy. So this is the long-term goal that we're looking at. Um, existing partnerships in Indonesia, sales partners in India, Pakistan and Nigeria, and uh, currently under negotiation is Colombia and some Latin American countries. Um, what we've learned in the last three years is everything's a lot more tedious than we expected it to be, um, but it's nonetheless very interesting. So this is basically what we've done. Permanent installations in Indonesia, Germany, Switzerland, Colombia, uh, planned installations for India, Peru, Pakistan. Um, our team is very young, as you can tell, I'm pr I think I'm the baby in the company. <laughs> But um, basically, everybody's under 35, I would say. We're about eight people, and our CEO is then a little bit older. Um, with some fresh capital, we would uh, strive to install some larger projects, meaning modular projects, putting turbines next to each other, behind one another, to meet the larger demand. Um, we actually are in the permitting process in the same river, the Inn, uh, south of Rosenheim in Wasserburg. This would be the first modular project with six turbines. Um, and in Colombia, we actually were there last week installing the first turbine out of a series of four. Um, and this is a partnership project with a private utility in Colombia. Um, other goals would be, of course, to develop further products, so more kinetic turbines, but let's say smaller depth requirement. We've noticed that many rivers and canals need uh, a turbine that would take maximum 50 centimeters of depth. Um, or a larger turbine. For many of these developing countries, for example, also Turkey, they always say, well, do you have a bigger turbine? We need a 30, 30 kilowatt turbine. So these are some of our goals. Um, lastly, we want to do some smart grid management in the off-grid uh, projects of ours. Currently, we deliver an inverter, a rectifier, and if the cu uh, customer asks, a battery. But we'd like to deliver that all, let's say, in a weatherproof cabinet with a little bit of smart management, uh, grid management. So right now we've had a big problem with how do you manage the demand points in the grid, who has priority, <coughs> when there's a limited amount of power supplied. Uh, here's a little bit to the financing round. Currently, this is the current ownership structure, private ownership uh, with 51%, e-capital from Münster, Germany with 32% and high-tech indoor fund at 17%. Um, E-Capital has just committed to a second round with 1 million, so there's a remaining 2 million euro which we're looking for. Um, and again, the main goals would be to accelerate our market entrance, complete it, I would say, and diversify our portfolio. And here's the schedule, and if you have any more questions afterwards, I would be happy to answer them. Do you have a question for Christina Gaia? Please wait for the microphone and yeah. You mentioned debris. You kind of show us a photo, but you haven't gone into how you actually managed to right. avoid them. So basically, in the water, the more of a or the the more you reduce your 90 degree angles, the better chance you have against debris. So there's going to be leaves, branches, big damaging trees, and a flood. 
At the beginning, we had big problems with these big damaging trees. Um, now we've, because we were floating on the water surface here, and the main larger pieces of debris are floating on the top, in the top 30 to 50 centimeters. Um, and now we're basically eliminated, we've eliminated this two float system or the two pontoons on top and moved to a single pontoon. And this is now floating slightly underneath the water surface so that the more damaging debris can either go on top of it or if it hits it, there's no more point where it can stop. It will just slide off. This was the main, I would say, design goal of this cage slash pontoon. Um, also, our cage has become a lot longer, and which makes the angle not as sharp. Um, in the inn, for example, we've had now three months time period where with continual operation, no need for cleaning. So the goal is if we can have an operating turbine every three months, one cleaning, that would be ideal. Thank you. Yeah. What is your biggest challenge dealing with developing countries and placing them there? Um, if the Thank you. end customer doesn't pay for the product themselves, they don't care as much about it. <laughs> and you have to have a customer that cares about the product. Otherwise, they won't maintain it, they won't take care of it. Uh, this price level which you mentioned, in case a five kilowatt machine, 12 and a half, half thousand, was it? Yes. Yes, this is pretty competitive compa uh, comparing to wind power, small wind power yes. also. Yes. If wind power has capacity factor 25-30%, in your case, in streams, it's near 100%. Mm. Why mm. don't you compete with wind power? You mean raise our prices? Not raise, but uh, you, you don't mention wind power at all. It's also well, renewable energy. I do. I There's peak market in, in Europe yeah. in small wind. We've, an we've analyzed wind power. Um, I could try to keep this presentation short. The main competitor in these jungle areas is diesel because the wind is not ideal in these situations. Um, but we have analyzed that and we beat them usually every time. Um, solar is getting a little bit more hard to beat. But you're right. I mean, I just didn't mention it as much as I should have, maybe. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, yeah. Christina. You did a great job. Thanks. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.